Truth be told, we thought the sun was setting on the internal combustion engine, but perhaps we're mistaken. Turns out there are more than a few people lobbying for it to remain the mainstay of motoring. I'm talking about e-fuels and hoping to shed a little light on why, frankly, they are about as ludicrous as calling a french fry a vegetable. Technically correct, but ultimately not that good for you. So what is an e-fuel and why are they making their way into our fully charged parlance? Well, according to the e-fuel alliance, they are climate-friendly fuels compatible with conventional engines, meaning they can be used without any conversion of existing combustion engines and distributed by existing petrol and diesel distribution infrastructures. Fantastic. Or is it? No question, a solution which requires little to no change to driving today, from engines, infrastructure and using a car, it sounds pretty dreamy. The epitome of reuse and repair, a veritable no-brainer. But of course, there are several thousand caveats. E-fuels are a concoction of hydrogen and carbon dioxide magically mixed together to create a petrol-like substance to be burned in an engine. And if you heard the word carbon in there, yes, that means that CO2 is released at the tailpipe into the atmosphere. But proponents of e-fuels will tell you that it's carbon neutral as that CO2 used to make the e-fuel comes from carbon capture. And here's where the red flags start appearing. Carbon capture, not that efficient or really viable yet. But even if it is viable, it uses tremendous amounts of electricity. And hydrogen, well, for e-fuels to get that lovely little E prefix, hydrogen needs to be made from water via electrolysis using loads and loads of renewable electricity. And for our full carbon capture and hydrogen 101s, check out the full episodes linked at the end of this video. And lest we forget, a combustion engine only turns about 30% of the energy that goes into it into useful mechanical energy and just wastes the rest of it to heat and friction. Conversely, in an electric car, you get electricity, ideally from renewable sources, you put it straight into the battery, lose a tiny, tiny bit in distribution, about 5%, and the electric powertrain, as it's more than twice as efficient as the combustion engine, and then all things considered, and you need approximately five times more electricity for e-fuels than you do for an EV. That's five times as many wind turbines and solar panels that we'd need to build and fund in order to power electrolysis and carbon capture and lossy combustion, when we could just cut out all of the middlemen and use a fifth of the energy for the same outcome. That just seems so dreadfully inefficient. It's like revising super hard for an exam and deliberately trying to get an F. But despite the bucket loads of inefficiency and just faff and waste that come with e-fuels, there are people who are pushing for them. Why? Well, it's at this juncture that things almost sound a bit conspiracy-y, so let's try and stick to the facts. Well, who wants them? You guessed it. Oil companies and some automotive laggards, and they've been lobbying for it since 2016 following the Dieselgate scandal. More recently, the E-Fuels Alliance have been lobbying against the EU Commission's 2035 phase-out of the combustion engine following the announcement of the EU Green Deal in 2020. Why? Well, because they're worried. And if I was an oil company, I too would be worried about the shift to electric. Half of their oil demand vanishes in the electric world and the other half, well, renewable energy gets cheaper when there's more of it. So how will oil companies make money in this electric decarbonized future that just doesn't operate on the same supply and demand economics of fossil fuels? Well, they'll try and make it run on the same economics, e-fuels. But what about the automotive companies? After all, surely with EVs accounting for 13% of new car sales in Europe, coupled with the fact that we don't even make e-fuels in meaningful quantities, and won't until about 2025, and even when we do, they'll be more expensive than petrol and diesel. Well, Audi, Porsche and BMW have all touted the merits of e-fuels. And fun fact, Porsche is heavily invested in an e-fuel company called Highly Innovative Fuels, which in my mind is a bit like calling a confectionery company really nice cake, somehow makes it less convincing. But there is a serious point here. Some may feel that it's up to governments to set the standards and targets, net zero by insert date, for example, but shouldn't necessarily determine the exact technology that would enable it. As does that unfairly eliminate some technologies or even stifle innovation? Some car companies are rightly anxious about getting the right support for building gigafactories and over-dependence on China, which currently holds an overwhelming majority of the battery supply chain. The charging network, confusing government incentives for drivers and what to do with the existing fleet on the road. And yes, there is a lot of work to do here. But there are a few, including McLaren and Ferrari, who will tell you that their customers don't want electric cars, that they're heavy, which takes away from the driving experience, they're not as viscerally exciting and noisy, they're more expensive and the range isn't good enough. I won't go into the ins and outs of why those things are so easily disputed. Watch the myriad of reviews we have on our show and if still not convinced, go and test drive one. Come to our live shows if you're nearby and test one there. 
And don't even get me started on the opportunities afforded by batteries getting more energy dense, right sizing for specific types of driving, and the big clanger, the ability to recycle a battery and use the raw materials time and time and time again. But it's unsurprising that it's the luxury brands peddling the EV reticence. After all, a luxury car is not a rational choice, and that perception of being told what to buy might not sit that well with an average McLaren driver. Just a hunch. A challenge to the synthetic fuel combustion crew, if you don't have demand for EVs from your customers, make it. Make your EVs exciting. Get those silicon carbide inverters doing their thing. Make the best user experience in the world. Woo drivers with the talk. Remember the age-old mantra of the faster horse. Well, the EU Commission has said that climate neutral fuels will be acceptable as part of the phase out of fossil fuel engines by 2035, meaning we may have some e-fuels in the mix if the oil lobbyists get their way. There is, of course, a question about the retrofitting of existing cars on the road with e-fuels. But whilst that sounds like a fair and democratic thing to do, it will dramatically increase the cost of running a car. And that's if, and it's a big if, the millions and millions of litres that we need can even be made. And if by some miracle we do get e-fuels at scale, by that stage most of us will have already experienced electric. And going back to combustion would be like insisting on using an 80s brick-like cell phone. So which way will car companies go? Stick or twist or both? I understand the desire to hedge bets, but we can't hedge them against the health of the planet. And I really cannot see the point in chucking renewable energy willy-nilly at e-fuels when EVs use energy so much more frugally. E-fuels beyond use for aviation and shipping and other hard to abate industries where there might not be another choice just don't feel logical. And if pursued for road transport, will prevent the economies of scale that's so drastically needed to ultimately bring the cost of EVs down. Cars may be an irrational choice, but e-fuels, perhaps even more so.